Three years ago, I made a video called The Future Tech of Virtual Reality. So I thought it's about time that I made an updated version. How many of the things I talked about are available to consumers at a reasonable price? And what other new technological advances have we seen in the VR industry that will be in our hands in the future? The first thing that I talked about was VR treadmills, or more specifically, tech that allows us to move around in VR more naturally without smooth locomotion or teleportation. Three years ago, there really weren't any consumer-focused companies making VR treadmills. There were some maybe five years ago in the very early days, but they were expensive and the market wasn't there yet, so these companies switched to commercial sales for things like VR arcades. We do finally have some options for consumers, like the Catwalk C, which is a relatively compact, omnidirectional treadmill, and unlike early VR treadmills, it doesn't have bars around restricting your movement. You're strapped into a stand which is behind you, and it rotates with your body, the straps also slide up and down, which allows you to bend over and crouch. They still aren't cheap though, at $1300. You've also got the Virtuox Omni One, which has a consumer version coming out designed for the home. It looks very similar to the Catwalk C, with a stand at the back and full body movement. This is going to be even more expensive at $2000, but this comes complete with a connected standalone headset and 30 games with full compatibility. Although they've got a developer version at $995, which is just for the treadmill without the headset included. The Catwalk C looks like the best option right now, although it's still very pricey, and it's only for enthusiasts with deep pockets and a dedicated space for it. Another thing to consider is compatibility. A lot of these aftermarket peripherals live and die on the games that support them. The Catwalk C treadmill does support pretty much any game that allows full room scale, which is obviously most VR games on PC. But they have got a list of games fully tested, which is pretty big, and includes the main games like Half-Life Alyx, Blade and Sorcery, VR Chat, and Pavlov. In my old video, I did talk about another treadmill called the Infinidec. The difference with this over the others is you're walking on a more conventional treadmill, and it can move in all directions, so you're walking more naturally. The more consumer-based treadmills, like the Catwalk C, use a low friction floor, then you have to wear special shoes. I haven't actually tried one, but the earlier versions always looked like you were slipping and sliding your feet, although the newer versions do look more natural, but with the Infinidex system, you're literally walking like you do in real life. They have actually made this much more compact over the version I showed three years ago, but this is still strictly commercial use, and it's still pretty big. I really hope that they can keep reducing the tech on this down in size and price, so that we have the opportunity to use one at home in the future. We've also seen some pretty nutty concepts, like the Ecto-1 VR boots, which have got motors and rollers in them, so when you walk forward, the motors pull your feet back, so you're effectively walking on the spot. From the footage, it looks like you can only walk very slowly, and I've got to imagine that they feel pretty heavy. So they're not going to feel natural when you move your feet around, but if they could improve the tech and make them lighter, maybe this concept might have some legs. Or should that be feet? One of the Mythbusters guys tried to crowdfund something similar a while ago, but it didn't reach its funding goal, and it was just a concept without a working prototype. In my old video, I also talked about some other accessories that were trying to give alternative ways to move in VR for much more affordable prices. Things like the 3D rudder, a way to play seated and simply rest your feet on a tilt pad, and then you twist to turn, and then you lean your feet forwards, backwards, side to side to move and strafe in the game. This was mostly designed for the PSVR as the motion controls didn't have thumbsticks, but it's not something that really sold well, and I think it'll be pretty much obsolete with the PSVR 2. The cyber shoes are another way to walk around in VR seated. This time, you need to be on a swivel chair, although you could still use a thumbstick to turn if you wanted. They strap to your existing shoes, and they've got rollers underneath, so you kind of shuffle your feet around to walk forwards and backwards. These are actually still for sale, but they're not cheap at $350, and it's not something I would personally want to use. I'm also not sure how well they're sold, but you never really see anyone talking about them. Cat Loco is a set of three sensors that you put on your feet and hip, then you walk on the spot and the software detects the sensor movement and then it moves you in the game. You can also put one foot forward to move forwards when you don't want to move around all the time. These are slightly more affordable at $200, but they're still pricey for what you're getting. You can also do something similar with some software called Natural Locomotion on Steam. This lets you use a variety of different controllers, including PSVR and Switch controllers. You attach them to your feet for the same effect, as well as having the option to use arm swinging movement with your hands. Let's look at haptic gloves. Three years ago, the haptic gloves on the market were all pretty large and heavy, and they were only available for the commercial market. Haptex was the main one I featured, which were pretty bulky with big cables. They recently revealed a new version of the gloves, which are smaller, 
and come with a built-in backpack PC, but they're still pretty bulky and they're very expensive at $4,500. And again, these are built for commercial use. These don't just track your finger movements, they've got hundreds of microfluidic actuators across your fingers and palms. This allows for really precise haptics that can give the feeling of a spider walking across your hand, as well as giving resistance to your finger movements. So when you hold something, it feels like you're actually holding something solid. There are other options on the market, which aren't as complicated like the Dexmo glove. This can track your hands and fingers as well as apply resistance to each finger individually. So just like with the Haptex gloves, it feels like you're holding onto something solid. They even have a demo where you're holding onto a beating heart and you can feel it pulsating through your fingers. They don't have all those sensors on the palms, so you don't get the sense of touch, but they're much smaller, lighter, and they haven't got all the cables coming from them. I can't actually find a price on these, but they're still commercial only, but it does show that the tech is getting smaller and more compact. There's also a new haptic glove coming to consumers by B-Haptics, although these are simpler still. They're basically fabric gloves that have haptic feedback at the end of each finger, so they're not gonna offer any resistance as you move your fingers, but they'll give a sense of touch. You also need to use external finger tracking like with the Quest 2. The price at $300 for the pair, so they're very affordable, but I'm not really sure how much these haptics are going to add over just using regular hand tracking without any gloves. If you want to make your own haptic gloves with finger tracking and finger resistance, then you need to check out Lucas VR Tech, who has been making his own gloves and then showing you how to make them yourself. The best part is that they're only going to cost you around $60. You can add a thumbstick to the glove so you can still move around in games. The game support for the actual finger resistance is very low right now, with only Boneworks and Half-Life Alex supported, but more games are going to get support in the future. The finger tracking works with any game that's got finger tracking support for the Valve Index controllers, but I'm not really sure I would bother using the gloves personally over the Valve Index controllers if you didn't have finger resistance. It's an incredible project, and I'll put a link to Lucas's YouTube channel so that you can watch his videos and get all the information that you need. Finger tracking without gloves is also something that we've seen come into the mainstream thanks to the Quest having some software updates that add finger tracking just using the inside out cameras. I tried this a while ago, and whilst it's impressive, there was some noticeable latency with a slight delay to your finger moving in the game versus real life, but more updates have been made since then, which apparently improve this. Meta also acquired startup Control Labs towards the end of 2019, who developed a device that you strap to your wrist which uses signals from the brain to allow you to control your hand with incredible accuracy and zero latency. They've even got examples of it working for people who don't even have all the fingers. This is still in research and development phase, but expect this technology to make its way into the consumer device in the future. One thing that I think we will see in the future is brain-computer interface systems, which Lord Gaiman of Valve has been talking about a lot, and we've seen patents from Valve for a head strap design with this technology built into it. Brain-computer interface, or BCI for short, is something similar to the wrist straps seen from Meta, that can read signals from the brain and allow you to control things with your mind, but also for you to actually feel things that are feeling cold or hot. It can read whether you're getting bored or maybe overwhelmed, allowing developers to tap into this data and make video games much more dynamic so that they can change up the pacing of the gameplay or introduce new things to keep you engaged for longer. It could also be used to stop people from getting motion sick when using virtual reality. It's exciting technology that could massively enhance gaming, making it even more immersive but I'm not sure we're going to see this in a consumer product soon. I am curious to see how well it works though. Another way to feel things in VR is through haptic vests. And this is one sector that has come a long way over the past few years with B-Haptics leading the way in the consumer market. You can buy these right now with two options. You've got the Taksu X16, which is $299, and then the Taksu X40, which is at $499. The only difference between the two is the size of the vest and the amount of tactile transducers. So the X16 has got 16 haptic points and the X40, surprisingly, has 40. They're wireless, fully adjustable, with fantastic software and the supported game list is constantly growing. These have been selling really well for a niche product and I know a few people who own one, although I've not purchased or tried one myself. The haptic points send vibrations that you feel through your body and it wraps around your torso front and back so that you can feel it when you're getting shot in specific points on your body. You can feel explosions through your entire torso. Rhythm games are a really good fit for this with the haptics pulsing to the music. You also have horror games where you can feel something grab or attack you. One of the coolest applications I heard about was in Half-Life Alyx. When you use a healing station, you can feel the energy surge and run through your body. 
If you want to go full dickhead, you can also buy additional attachments for your arms, hands, feet, and even your head. So you can feel feedback in your hands when punching in something like Thrill of the Fight. You've got the arm attachments, which allow you to feel vibrations in your forearms to simulate recoil as you fire a virtual gun. You can use the face rumble to feel the wind punch you in the face. Now all we need is a crotch attachment for science. The compatibility list is really impressive, supporting many games on the Quest and PC, and they've got mod support so that other members of the community can actually mod support into games that aren't officially supported. We've even seen PC VR modded games like Gunfire Reborn, which has an excellent VR mod allowing you to play the game in VR, which now has Behaptic support added by a community member. In my old video, I also talked about the Tesla suit. This is a full body suit featuring motion capture capability, haptic feedback, as well as letting you feel hot or cold. It's actually really affordable at $13,000. Obviously this is for the commercial use only, and I'm actually a little surprised it's still around, to be honest. We also saw the Feel Real, which was successfully funded through Kickstarter. It's an attachment that you strap to the bottom of your headset, and it allows you to smell dog shit in the virtual streets. It also got blocked by the FDA, and backers didn't get their money back. Let's talk full body tracking. This hasn't changed much over the past three years, with the main ways to track your body in VR, by either using trackers and attaching them to your feet and hip, or using some sort of external camera. Vive trackers were the most popular, which are pucks which integrate with SteamVR's tracking system, but they're expensive at $130 each, and you need at least three of them. Luckily, we have started to see some competition with Tundra trackers, which are much smaller and lighter, but they don't really cost much less than the Vive pucks. The other way of doing it for a much cheaper price is using something like the Kinect 3D camera, which is an old Xbox accessory. You then use some software to track legs and arms with good IK. This is restricted to only if you face the camera, and it's not as good or reliable as the tracking puck solution. There is a new solution called Slime VR, which is due for release sometime this year, and a few YouTubers have got their hands on it, and while it's not perfect, it's much cheaper than using the puck style system with Steam VR trackers at $165 for a set of five. It also doesn't require Steam VR base stations to work, so you're gonna get full body tracking, all included, and it also works with the Quest 2 standalone. We're gonna have to wait for the product to actually get into consumers' hands to really see how good it is, but even if it's only 80% as good as Steam VR pucks, it's still a much cheaper tracking solution that should give some good results. Early last year, we saw some research footage from Carnegie Mellon at University, where they used a MetaQuest 2, and they strapped cameras to the controllers facing the player's body. They then used the camera, very similar to how Meta uses the built-in cameras to create a skeletal framework, and then take that data and put it into a virtual avatar. This actually could be very interesting, because the Quest Pro has got built-in cameras for individual tracking, and I expect the Quest 3 will also use the same controllers but I'm not sure if the position of the camera would allow for something like this. I think having something integrated into the VR system is the way to go, where you just slip on the headset and put on the controllers and it works, rather than needing to use external sensors or cameras and having to strap things to your body. I'm gonna go over headsets in a separate video, so let's wrap this one up with a summary of all the things I just talked about. When it comes to movement in VR, treadmills are now available to consumers, but they're still very expensive and you need a dedicated space for them to sit in your house. I'd love to try one, just to see how natural they feel, but the Infinidex system looks like it would feel much more natural, like you're actually walking rather than sliding. But I'm not sure how much they're going to be able to bring the price and size down, not to mention that you've got the noise of the moving treadmill like that. I would also be interested to see if the brain-computer interface stuff could work with movement, whether it's allowing you to move through just thinking, or even just fixing the motion sickness issue some people experience, allowing developers more freedom to make games that have faster, more extreme movement. Haptic gloves are still not really ready for consumers. The B Haptics gloves are boasting the first consumer focused product, but with just some sensors at the end of the fingers, and they've got no built in tracking or resistance, I'm not sure if they're going to be worth it. Lucas VR Tech Haptic gloves look really cool. But one of the big things with any of these accessories is how well they're supported, and a homemade solution like this is always going to be a struggle to get developers to add support. So you're left modding supporting yourself, which is really difficult. The gloves also need to be made yourself, including some 3D printed parts, so it's not something that you can buy off the shelf, even if the price is extremely cheap for what you're getting. Haptic vests really are consumer ready now, with the B-Haptics equipment and the people who own them swear by them, saying that it's hard to play without support, once they've experienced them. 
They're still not cheap, but they're certainly more affordable, and the game support is excellent for something like this. Full body tracking is still expensive and requires setup, and we really need a built-in solution with one of the big headset manufacturers for it to be the norm and get support in most VR games. Let me know what you think about all the VR tech. Have you actually tried any of this stuff yourself? Or do you think that most of this stuff is just a gimmick that's not worth the money and hassle setting it up and using